Well, I was going through my material because I wanted some yellow material. I have an orange and I have a gold, but I don't have any yellow. So what I'm going to use is some muslin. I'll have to paint it. And there's my black. My idea is I want to make a really, really big cloth sunflower for kind of like a door hanger. So this is the two fabrics I'm going to work with. So now this muslin here will be the outer edge. And I'll have to paint that uh, of some sort of yellow. And I'll probably do it after I get it together. And, and then, of course, the black will be the middle. And I'll grungy that up. I'm trying to figure out what else I need. Oh, I got to find something to make the round piece about what I want. So I'm going to look around in my room and maybe go to my kitchen. Because I want it pretty big. I see some... Let's see. I see some charger plates up there. Yeah, I don't know if that'd be big enough. Well, I'm going to start looking. I'll grab one of those down first because they're in here. And I'm going to see. Well, I got the charger plate down. And these were setting inside them. I had two of them. It's the reef forms. And it's just a little bit larger. So I'm going to use... Boy, that one is kind of out of whack. I don't know. Let me see my other one and see if it looks better. Yeah, that looks a little better. So I'm going to use this, trace around it. For the flower. Now I gotta find something for the center about the size that I want. Okay, I have a paper plate here and I think that might work for the center on my black material because on the, the others that I've made, I've just made the slits and left them, you know, like that, I kind of want to make petals on this one. So I think that's going to work. So I'll get my black material that I have there. And I have a white pencil. And I'll do that. Now I did make this. I did. I'm going to cut this out first before I go to the black. But this is doubled because I want, I want it doubled. So I'm going to cut that route right, right fast and then draw the pattern off on my black one. Well, now I you just need one layer of the black. And for reference, this is about 8 inches. And this is about, this, I think it's about 14. Yeah. So 14 inches is my diameter of the largest circle and 8 on this. And I only cut one of this and two of these, and I've pinned these together. Now I'm going to find me some yellow because I want the outside painted before I put my center circle on. Because if I try to put this on and then paint, I'll be getting it on my black. So right now I'm going to find some yellow and start painting. And I'm using, let's see, what is this? A Golden Sunset by Apple Barrel. And I did add some water in it. But it's not going to be so watery that if I have some left, I can't just stick it back in my bottle. And I think, stay like that, I'm going to separate these. That held it in place while I was cutting it. Where's my pin cushion? Don't need these laying on the floor because I go barefooted. All right. So 
very quickly. I'm just going to go around the edges. Okay, I'm going to set this aside somewhere to dry right there for a minute and do this one. Let that dry and start putting it together. Okay, it is dried. And now with my smaller flowers, I normally just do it by hand with a thread needle and just do a quick running stitch around. But since this is a larger area, I think it'd be easier for me to go with a sewing machine and just go around real fast. And hopefully, I'll remember to leave an opening to put the stuffing in, unlike in one video where I was making a crow and I just sewed it right up and I had my stitch so tight I couldn't uh, even get my seam ripper to rip open the seam, so I had to make another one. And also, if you want to hot glue this, you could you could do that. And if you want to use a thread and needle and just do a quick run, running stitch around, you can do that also. So. It's whatever way you want to do it. All right, I have it sewn up, and I went all the way around with my sewing machine, and it was faster to, than running, uh, doing it by hand. It went really fast, and I did remember to stop sewing just in the nick of time so I'd have an opening to put my fill in, and I've already stuffed it, so now I've got a needle and thread here, and I'm just going to do a running stitch to close that up. Now I want to get as close to the stitch as I can. There, that's it. I'll start from the bottom. And I kind of pinned it to give me, you know, to keep it closed while I was trying to do this running stitch by hand. But I'm going to continue on. I've just got about, just about two inches, maybe an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, whatever, to close up. And then I'm going to take my uh, coffee mixture and I'm going to brush it real good on here. And then I'm going to have to take it outside to dry because it's got to take, it's going to take a while to dry. Okay, now I am just putting on my mixture of the coffee and cinnamon. And I usually try to just use more of the coffee on top. Once in a while, I'll dip in the bottom and get some of the cinnamon because it kind of brushes off. And I'll just go all the way around it and I'll probably get some more of the cinnamon in here. On the black but I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'll come underneath here and do this then I'm gonna take it outside and let it dry I'm gonna kind of crunch it too I almost forgot to film this I'm taking my flowers or my flower now and I'm cutting them like this and I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing each one of them. But I'm going to go all the way around and do this and do it on the bottom one also. Now the bottom one where, like right here, I've showed how to make this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this again. I'll go right in the middle. I'll cut right in the middle on this one, the one underneath. Then I'm going to finish cutting that around, but I cut one. Okay. Then see here where I have kind of V'd that off. I'm going to go around and do that to each one of these. To every one of those. And then, then I will start figuring out how I'm going to decorate it. 
Okay, I'm trying to find some things to add to my flower. That looks cute, so I thought, well, I see a lot of them with bees. So I cut out a pattern on my cameo. It's actually, I wouldn't even have to do that. I mean, you have a circle here and an oblong the body. It, yeah. Anyways, I thought, but I wanted little antennas, and I went and found this copper wire, and some that I've got at the thrift store, and I paid 25 cents for it. So I'm going to use some of it when I cut off a piece, and now taking my needle nose pliers and just making some little loops on the end and I think I'm going to go ahead and glue that down on one on the inside of that one because I'm going to hot try to hot glue it I might have a mess again me and the hot glue I think I got mine yeah I do well, anyways I'm going to go ahead let's see where do I want that That like that. So I'll just put me some hot glue right here. I can go ahead and start that. I need a precision. I have a hot glue gun that has a smaller tip. I have one, but it just drips so bad. I might get it out just for projects like this. Okay, I've got that in there. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know. Maybe I ought to try to find my other glue gun. Who knows where it's at? It was one just... It was a sure bonder, but it had a finer tip on it. I don't need a whole lot of stuffing in it. I just got to remember to leave a spot to stuff it right there right there put that down and then I can stuff that okay for the wings I was trying to come up with something for wings, and I thought, well, what did I do with that? Did I take it out? Oh, here it is. I already had some burlap stiffened, because I make burlap flowers, because I like them like, here, I gotta glue this on, but see? I make different burlap flowers, and I usually keep them in a drawer, and just grab them as I need them. But this fabric's already stiffened, so I'm going to draw my wing pattern out on it. Got to find something. Oh, where's my pen tip? And use that for the wings. get it going up and down like that. Anyways, I'm just going to trace this off and cut it out and then I'll stuff my little bee and then glue the wings onto it with the bur in the burlap. While my hot glue gun, hot glue gun is still going, I'm gonna set this aside for right now. I want. I decided that I my flower needed something else, so I have this rope. Where's my glue gun? I like to go down in the middle here with my glue, hot glue. Hold that together so it doesn't fray. I just, I think I might have been off camera. I just stuck it down in the middle. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is 
run a bead of glue, I've got to be able to see, and glue the rope on around this. Okay, I ran this around there, it's on, and before I stuff my little B, I'm going to put some stripes on him. Probably a little thicker than that. That'd be easier to do it now than to wait until he's stuffed. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry before I stuff it. I'll probably give it one more coat. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry, put another coat on there, and then cut out his wings and glue them on. All right, I cut up a bunch of little uh, strips of uh, material, probably about three-fourths to an inch wide, each one of them. And, and then I've laid a bunch out here. And this was just some seam binding that I had got at the thrift shop a long time ago. As you can tell, that's pretty old. And then just different other kinds. And then the, some of the lace that you buy at uh, the ribbon at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to, I've got it in half. Now I'm just going to tie it all together. Pull that on out that way. I need to move this stuff. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I've got an idea. Okay, I want that B about right there like that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hang this from that. And then to use, for, what I'm going to use for a hanger is just more this rope. I'll hot glue it back there. like that, and that'll be what I use to hang it with. And it'll be, it should be finished unless I can think of something else I wanna do to it. But when I get it finished, I'll show you. Okay, here's one of the Crocs, like what I got. Oh, I've had this one, but I bought two of them last week at the thrift shop and I had that I showed those in a haul but with this one I have taken the spackling compound and put it in the little holes and I've let it dry and this is some paint I had mixed up where I had painted one before so I'm just going to probably give this two coats of this then I think I'm going to use one of my crockery stamps on it because they seem to sell pretty good. But I'm just going to go on and give this two coats and then put the stamp on it, I believe. Okay, my crock has had two coats and it's ready to be stamped. And... Let's pull this back so I, and I'm putting my ink on it. I'm using the IOD ink. I hope that's wet enough. I like to stamp on a piece of paper before I actually stamp. That's the first time I've used this particular one. I'm off over here to the side. See how it looks. 
came out good. Okay. I don't have any on the it looks good all right all I have to do is stamp it now sounds simple oh just rubbing it across there not letting go of the stamp itself. Yep, got it. Looks pretty good. Got a little blurry right there. It's okay. Looks good. All right, now I'll be finished with that one because really all I need to do is put some greenery in it. I'll put a little of the floral foam down in there and stick some greenery in it and it'll be good. They always seem, when I paint these up, I only have like one ever show and these do seem to sell. Alright, I'm going to put the greenery in it and I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. Now I have a tin can that I've cut the bottom out of, and I'm sure you've all seen the uh, bent tin cans, but I wanted to try the Dixie Bell patina paint and where you rust it. So I thought, well, to try it the first time, I'm gonna just use a can. I'm going to find the center of this, which I think is right there. And I'm going to sand it. I have a rubber mallet. There. Bend that a little bit more up there. Now, I'm going to take my can out to the garage and put a coat of primer on it. I have one that's kind of a, it's called red, but it's, it looks kind of like a rusty red. I've used it before. But I'm going to take it out there and spray paint that on there and let it dry. And then I'm going to try using this. And I know I don't want to just brush this on and have brush strokes. So i got to find something. I think I have some sponges. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm going to take this out and spray paint it with the, the what do you call it? the base coat, okay, primer, and I'll, when I get done, I'll show you what I used. Okay, that's primed with, I have it primed with the Flat Red Primer by Rust-O-Lim, and it says to give it a coat and let it dry, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't want brush strokes, so I'm just going to tap this on. I thought it'd be better to try it on something I didn't care if I ruined than to do it on something I really want to keep. I need to get a little familiar with it. Got to spout, have it finished. It'll fill in better with the second coat, I'm sure. If some of that red comes through, that's fine. Okay, while I was in the garage spray painting, I decided I needed something 
just let this dry. So I took a old sear round that we had and I had some dowel rod and I drilled a hole real fast. That way I'll have something that can hang off from. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and do the second coat. And on the second coat, you give the coat and then I believe you spray, spray the uh, patina spray and I got it in the green, which turns a rust. This is dry, so I'm giving it the second coat. I've coated one side already. And this is the coat that I'm supposed to go ahead and spray it while it is wet and then leave it to dry. I'm gonna set this stuff aside. And now I'm supposed to, uh, I should have had that sooner, spray this. Okay, and it's gonna run. That's why I wanted it to sit straight. And we're gonna leave it and see what it does. It's my first time using the Dixie Bell. This is the patina spray in green. I'm doing it on a tin can so I can practice. And if it turns out cute, I'll do something with the can. Okay, the can is finished drying and this is the way it turned out. Now the other side, let me see if I can get it is not, I mean, the, it has a totally different look. It looks actually like a rusty can. It just doesn't have the colors in it like this one here, this side here. And I was pulling out things, trying to figure out what I was gonna put in it. And this is, I mean, this, this is not gonna how I'm gonna have it done. Maybe I'll use these flowers, but if I do, I think I took this uh, golden sunset because the yellow flowers are pretty bright and I so I took one and painted it with the golden sunset and I like that color much better with the rusted can. So I'm when I'm going to take some of that paint and paint in some of these and have two different colors. I think that would look better. And then figure out what I'm going to do from there and I I like the front of this. I don't want to hide it, so I think I'm going to take some jute and just run it around the top of the can. I'm not really sure, but that's what I'm working on right now. When I get it probably finished, I'll come back and show you. 